In 2006, in the journal Glaucoma, we published a study in which we looked at SLT as both a primary and an adjunctive therapy. At the time, we compared SLT to Zalatan, which was the prostaglandin at the time, which was on formulary. We found that when we treated the patients who had never been exposed to medication, you could not distinguish the results between laser and eye drop. The patients were identical in terms of what the pressure reduction was from baseline, which was 30%, and also the responder rate. In fact, when we looked at the data, we actually found that the best responses were in the treatment naive eyes. Well, when we consider the treatment of glaucoma, it's quite common to start with monotherapy drug, but it's also quite common to have patients which need stepped up therapy. So you have options. You can either step up therapy by adding another drug, or in my opinion, you can do SLT. The advantage of doing SLT in this adjunctive role is that you can still keep the patient on monotherapy drug. So in terms of compliance, you're not making it more complicated for the patient. Another great role of SLT as an adjunctive therapy, if you have patients on multiple medications and they're now becoming intolerant to one, the value of SLT is you can do the laser treatment and actually take them off medications, which not only will now improve compliance because it's less complicated, but also you won't have the tolerability issues. So it is valuable as an adjunctive therapy, but you have to understand you won't get the same pressure reduction that you would have gotten if you had done it as a primary therapy. Of note, I wanted to mention that uh, when you look at SLT as a treatment, you can certainly keep the patients on drug when you do it, but if you go through a washout period, you'll actually find that SLT is effective, but with a slightly blunted effect. So there's something about being on eye drops that will blunt the subsequent effect of SLT, but that's no different than when you add a second eye drop to a patient who's already on an eye drop. Nobody in the world has yet published a prospective randomized trial on the repeatability of SLT. However, in the report that we published in 2006, as well as other reports from around the world, it certainly does have a role. Interestingly, when it was compared to its predecessor, argon laser trabeculoplasty, it actually did better in the mode of repeatability. But just as when you're adding more eye drops to a patient already on eye drop, when you add SLT to a patient who's already had SLT, you have a blunted effect. You don't get the same bang for your buck the more you repeat it. Now I have to say we're very excited. We recently got a large grant from our government in Canada to do a prospective randomized trial looking at the repeatability of SLT. So we hope to have those data that have not yet been published worldwide. In 2008, as well as in 2011, we published two prediction rule analyses in the Journal of Glaucoma. What you do in a prediction analysis is you look at all of the factors that pertain to that patient prior to doing the laser therapy and you predict the likelihood that they will have a successful outcome. What was interesting when we looked at all of the factors you know about the patient, their gender, their nationality, what type of glaucoma they have, whether they're on medications, how you do the laser, etc., we found the only two predictive factors were number one, how high that pressure was ever in the history of the patient and how high the pressure was the day you did the laser. So the two only predictive factors are pressure. The higher the pressure, the more likely you will get a successful response. Again, no difference between laser and monotherapy prostaglandin. So when we look at the type of research we're doing in our lab, we do clinical research on patients, but we also do basic science research in the laboratory. And what we found is with patient care, it helps us better define what is the optimal way to deliver the laser in terms of protocol development. But in the basic science lab, it actually allows us to understand what the laser is doing to the cells. And we can determine how much laser would be optimal laser based upon how the cells respond. We find that if you back off a little bit and treat them in a healthy fashion, it promotes their health and well-being. However, if you're too aggressive, that's when you can see some of the detrimental effects. So the research has very much been valuable to help guide us into what optimal patient care will be.